man of God, Pastor Earl Gorns. God bless you. God bless you. Will you blow your horns and give God a praise? He's worthy of all the glory and all of the honor. Have the Lord been good to you? Oh. You mean to tell me even in the midst of a pandemic, God's still good? Praise Jesus. Many of us, as David said, yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil. So many of us have been walking through the valley of the shadows of death. Some of you are, I've got some healthcare professionals in here. And some of you have jobs that require you to constantly come in contact with the public. And so we do understand that it is sometimes it's a it's, it can be very dangerous but god is with you and we're praying that the lord will keep you and that god will protect you praise god everybody tonight i've invited one of my sons in the gospel to come and to share the word of the lord that's in his heart now he hasn't been here all week so he really doesn't know what we've been talking about and so um he hasn't been here since he has gone through <laughs> some of those things that he has gone through. Now, uh, I don't know if you know this or not, but um, he had, um, I mean, like, a, what's that? that would be an aneurysm back in uh, December. Some of us know that because we talked about it in the True Heart Retreat. But since then, he has had some issues with the virus. And so he... Um, if you get an opportunity, maybe he'll share a little bit of it with you. But um, we had the chance to, we met this brother, uh, ah, let me see, that had to be 77, I believe, 1977, 76, 77, and uh, he had been over in Germany, and he and his wife, Tanya, Tanya's out there somewhere, she's in the car, there she is, bless you, Tanya, and, um, and so... We met him at Fort Bragg in 1977, I believe, 76, 77, and um, God, uh, he was hungry for the Lord, and so we preached Jesus to him, and God turned this man's life around, and so here it is, after all of these years, he is still in the Carolinas. By the way, he's from Georgia, the Atlanta area in Georgia. And so we we are uh, he he's still in in the in the Carolinas. He's made this his home. Um, he has uh, God led him some years ago. He started a church in a small area called Lake View, Lake View, South Carolina. And God is doing some miraculous things in Lake View. And so we are grateful to God for what He's doing in Lake View through this man and woman of God. All right, so we're going to step down and we're going to have pass around you to come and share his heart with us and uh so if you're watching uh, by um the digital media uh we thank you we ask you to stay tuned because this man of god's got something to say god bless you will you blow your horns and give him a faith tabernacle welcome god bless you god bless you is it already on God bless you. Why don't you give God a praise out there? Glory to God. We certainly honor the Spirit of the Lord here. I want to give honor, amen, to Pastor Earl and Pastor Denise and uh, the Faith Tabernacle family. God bless you guys. Thank you guys for inviting us to come and share a little bit with you during this week. I have... Uh, been through the fire of sort, uh, but God has been faithful. I was uh, asking the Lord what was it that he wanted me to say in particular to this church. Glory to God. God told me to tell you that this that you are going through and that the churches are going through is a trial of your faith this is a trial of your faith it doesn't matter where it came from 
But even in this, God is allowing us to go through a type of trial. It is in these type of situations that God proves us. It is in the fire that forges us. And I want you to understand that although this is, these are difficult times, this is where God is proving you as a person, as a church, as a body of believers. And I want to encourage you to stay faithful. I was talking to someone in our church and I was reminding them that it's easy to talk about your faith in the Lord and your commitment to God when there is no test, trials, no attack. But it's in the fire, it's under attack that we prove, glory to God, our faith. Our faith is tried by these types of situations. It is in these kinds of situations that we find out Glory to God, our pastors find out in particular, those that are usable, trustworthy, amen. But it's, it's, it's forged in a fiery situation. It is forged under fire. Soldiers, uh, I, I used the analogy earlier uh, this week. Uh, I went in the military, but I was not really a warrior i spent three years in the military but not as a warrior not not as a combat soldier i knew nothing about battlefield experience amen except for the fact that i have been trained for it but never experienced it and this is true as it pertains to believers that we come to church we come to these types of settings we go through Sometimes the motion, and sincere as it may be, glory to God, we still don't know how we will fare under fire. And sometimes when you look around, when something like this hits, it is a devastating blow. And I'm talking basically about all we've been going through. My situation in December... Uh, I was in the hospital, went in the hospital the 24th of Christmas, the Christmas Eve, 24th of December, came out January the 8th, and still was not 100%. Took me a while to get my strength back, thought I was about right, and then I got hit by coronavirus. And this hit me hard. But what hit me even more was that people in our church got hit. And it devastated me uh i was having what we would call a job moment i was having a job moment when job first got attacked his children and all that he had one bad report after another bad report and job was going through this when by the time he could process one bad report another bad report even more devastating than that report well, I was having one of those situations. I was having one of those kinds of situations where I was getting one bad report after another. This person got hit. This person got hit. That person got hit. People in my family was getting hit. People in my, in my hometown in Georgia were getting hit by this virus and all the things that we was going through. But let me say this to you. Glory to God. In the midst of it all, in the midst of all of that, God proved himself. He proved his awesomeness, his power, amen, his mercy, glory to God, his faithfulness. And, and God has never been the issue. The issue has been me as to whether I would be, I would be faithful under fire. Could I still worship? W would I still be faithful? Would I still serve? Would I still love the way that God wanted me to love? I wanted to share that with you and let you know that your faith is under fire and, and the enemy wants you to melt in these kinds of situations. Amen. But it's the Holy Spirit that will, amen, will embolden you and strengthen you and, and, and gird you up. Glory to God. The Lord will empower you to go through every trial, every situation. I'm not talking foolishly. Amen. Because there are some things we can do foolishly that could hurt us, but I'm talking about some things that... That, that is beyond our control. 
Amen. In the book of First Peter, the Bible talks about, amen, the trial of your faith being much more precious than that of gold. Trial, trial of your faith. And I know that this is not an attack by somebody attacking your, your faith as in challenging whether you are a Christian or, or not. But this is a trial where the enemy wants to put pressure. He wants to put pressure on you and make you faint in the midst of all of this. Make you give up, lose heart, turn coward, and run away. But I'm telling you, I believe that the Lord has fortified you and prepared you for even this moment, for even this season, for even this time. I want you to know that, that, amen, soldiers, soldiers, you were, see, you were trained for this, before you got on the battle, before you wind up on this battlefield. You were trained for this moment. You had no idea what the moment would look like. But this is the moment. This is a moment. Glory to God. And there may be some other things that will come later. But this is a moment in the warfare. This is a moment in the battle. Glory to God that we are going through. And although it's attacking physically as far as our bodies are concerned. I want you to know the enemy will use anything in his arsenal to cause you to get weary in your well doing. But you have to not faint. Don't faint. Don't give up. Don't lose heart. Don't turn coward. Don't run. Amen. Glory to God. Show up every Sunday. Show up for every service. Show up with worship. Show up with your praise. Show up, amen, in the giving. Show up in the serving. Hallelujah. Because you were trained for this. It's your faith that's under fire. I wanted to give you that because that's where my heart has been. I need you to know the Bible says that many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord will deliver him out of them all. God will deliver you. There's, there's nothing in scripture that says that the enemy won't attack you or touch you. Amen. But God promises to deliver you. He promised to bring us out. Hallelujah. I want you to know that. God promised to bring you out. Promised to bring you out. No matter what this what this is. I, I remember there was a, a, a young a person that served under Paul. And in Paul's ministry, who had gotten sick, and they were writing about, Paul was writing concerning this church's concern for him. Well, he had been sick unto death, but it was the prayers of the saints that preserved him. And Paul said that he was, he was, he was happy because had God not delivered him and had he died in this thing, it would have, it would have hurt his heart. Well, I need you to know, glory to God, that if Paul went through certain crises and people serving under him, I need you to know sometimes we go through these situations. There's no need to hold your head down. There's no need for you to feel ashamed because something happened. Glory to God, that COVID happened. Or, or in my case, glory to God, a brain, brain a bleed or whatever it might be. The enemy came against us, but our God is greater than our adversary. God is greater, glory to God, than our sicknesses. He's greater, glory to God, than the attacks of the enemy, whether it be physical, whether it be psychological, whether it's emotional, whether it's demonic, hallelujah. God is greater. Our God is greater. Amen. But one of the things that has taken place that while we are going through this, God is proving your faithfulness. Hallelujah. And I, was, I wanted to make sure that you understand that you continue to be faithful because it's out of the faithful one that God chooses the next level, amen, of leaders and those that's going to, amen, that's going to stand before others. Somebody's got to have a testimony. Somebody, amen, glory to God, has got to be able to tell the story when this, because this, this is a historic event and there will be, there will be somewhere in history where somebody has to stand and tell how the church plowed through, glory to God, COVID, somebody say hallelujah. You got to have a testimony and you can't have a testimony without a test. You got to have a testimony. And you must have a test. Somebody's got to say this to the next generation of, of faith tabernacle. Somebody's got to tell the story of how you went through a difficult time, how we had service or we had to move everything outside, but we didn't stay home. Somebody said, hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. It, it, 
It inconvenienced us for a moment, but it didn't take our praise away from us. Somebody say hallelujah. I need you to know that you got to be able to tell the story of God's faithfulness. And the Holy Spirit, glory to God, is girding you for the moment. He's girding you, glory to God, to go through and to be a witness of God's goodness and his power and of his authority. God is still healing. God is still working miracles. There are still signs and wonders. People are still getting saved. Just because we're having a moment and God knew and the Lord knew that this would happen. We didn't know. I had no idea that I would have a brain bleed in December. I had no idea that I would be the, one of the first, probably one of the first, to go through in, uh, uh, in, in the fellowship, glory to God, with a situation of COVID-19. Uh, and the enemy wanted to embarrass us. Uh, thank God. Thank God for those who know you, who know your heart. Glory to God. And I remember pastor calling me to encourage me because it was a difficult time. It was a difficult moment. It was one of those moments, glory to God, where you start to question whether you should even be leading somebody. Somebody said hallelujah. But amen. A good word. I needed a good word. I didn't just need a word. I needed a good word. I needed a word in season. I needed a word, amen, that, that the Holy Spirit had birth forth, glory to God, out of the heart of somebody who were praying for me. So I need you to know, glory, you just can't say anything. You must have a word in season to speak into the life of somebody that's going through a trial at this moment. Hallelujah. God is preparing you for that. God is preparing you for that. For when you go through, you know how to go through. You know how to overcome you know how to walk in victory hallelujah want to encourage you to be faithful continue to be faithful now i want to get to my message and while y'all start laughing i know you're probably laughing but i i need to get to my message because this this moment i let i said all that to lead up to this here i want to talk to you about a man who is and according to scripture there is a friend that sticks closer than a brother and sometimes you don't know who that is until there is a trial in your life. And so in the book of, of, of uh, Second Samuel, if you will, the book of Second Samuel, chapter 15, amen, and chapter 18, glory to God. There is a young, there is a man that David has come to know in his running and his running away from from Saul David has been running has ran and ultimately he has come to be king but somewhere in his running he ran up on a man in under the Philistines in the Philistine nation glory to God by the name of Itai Itai was a leader he was a leader of men glory to God and and in a time of need and sometimes we meet folks we don't know we're going to need them I need you to understand that you don't know you're going to need these people, but you better thank God for them. Hallelujah. God puts people in your life for a particular moment, a particular time. Hallelujah. You got to learn how to embrace what it is and who it is God has put in your life. And it, amen, had been touched in some manner by David while David was running away from Saul and being pursued by his own countrymen. And ultimately, David comes to the throne. And over years of being king, David is ultimately attacked not by his adversary from without, not by those enemies he's fought, glory to God, in other countries, but his own son rose up against him during his king in his kingdom while David had gotten older. Absalom came against David. Glory to God. And, and not only did he come against David, he was intending to kill David and take the throne for himself. In this time, and this is a time of shame because when, when Absalom came against David, the king had to come off his throne and leave in shame to run away from his son. He was running away from Absalom. And... 
walking away, running away, the king, this warrior, this man who had fought, fought wars and fought armies and killed giants, is now in flight for his life, running away from his son. Everything is against him. And, and not only was Absalom going to kill David, he would potentially kill anything in David's family that could rise up against him and claim the throne. So in this, we find that David has to flee. He is fleeing for his life. Glory to God. In chapter 15, if you will, a second Samuel chapter 15, verse 18. Thank you, Lord. And we find, starting at verse 17, and the king went forth and all the people after him and tarried in a place that was far off. And all his servants passed on beside him. All those people that had served with David and, and they, those that were faithful to him. See, loyalty, loyalty is one of the things that you need in a pastor need or a leader needs in a time of this nature in a crisis of this nature we need people that glory to God that's not going to melt under fire that's not going to faint during difficult times hallelujah you need to be one of those people that God is forging in the fire that you are dependable that you're not a fair weather person you're not a fair weather saint you're not a fair weather friend hallelujah and so David is running Glory to God, because he don't want to fight his son, but glory to God, he, he don't want to stay there and be killed either. Hallelujah. And the people that follow him were people that were committed to him. And they tarried in a place that was far off. And all his servants passed on beside him. And all the Cherethites and all the Pelethites and all the Gittites and 600 men which came uh, after him from Gath. This Gath Gath is one of the cities of the Philistines. Gath is one of the cities of Philistines. Matter of fact, Gath, I believe, is where uh, 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 Goliath came from. Hallelujah. So Gath was one of those cities that David had fought against and, uh, and, and fought and overcome and had victories when he was fighting the Philistines. So, But now there are 600 people Hallelujah, that's coming from a nation, glory to God, that was, it was an enemy, was an enemy of David. And they now have aligned themselves and allied themselves with this great leader. Hallelujah. Do you not know sometimes God will raise up folks? God will raise up people who don't know you or raise up people, glory to God, that was not, amen, that may not even be a member of your church, that may not know nothing about your prayer life, but they have seen your character and seen your integrity and watched you when you went through, how you overcame victory, how you did not try to hurt people who were trying to hurt you. People look for that. People look for stability. They look for people who are sound. Glory to God. They needed leadership. They had a warrior's heart. What they didn't have was good leadership. And they came and, and, and they came to serve under, under David. And so that 600 that came from Gath, hallelujah, they passed on before the king. Then said the king to Itai, the Gittite. He just, now get, Itai was the leader of this 600. Itai was the leader of these 600 men who had come to David, glory to God. And he just got there. Can I tell you? He just got there. He hadn't been there long. He just gotten there a day or so before. And he came there thinking that the, the kingdom was secure. But when he got there, David was having issues. David was having problems. And he goes on to wherefore, David said to Itai, wherefore or where, why will you go also with us? Return to thy place and abide with the king. And thou art, for thou art a stranger and also an exile. Whereas thou camest but yesterday. You just got here. Why are you going to follow me? I'm running. I'm running away and I'm having to leave Glory to God, I'm, I'm, being, I'm being thrust out. 
by my own son. It's, this is probably the most difficult time of my life. Why will you follow me? Why will I want you to come, amen, to me during a time that is so difficult? Hallelujah. Glory to God. David was concerned that, get, uh, that, 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 that this young man or this man would harm himself, put his life in jeopardy. So he's saying to Itai, why would you come with me? Why are you following me today? Why would I ask or put you in a situation, glory to God, that would make you go up and down with us, wherever that is? Don't know where I'm going to be at. Seeing I don't, I, I go where I may, I go where I may and return, I, I go whither I may. Return thou and take back thy brethren. Mercy and truth be with thee. And if they are, now look at this here, this is what I want to get to. In a time of crisis, hallelujah, this is where you find out what people are made of in difficult times. In a time of a coronavirus. In a time, amen, glory to God, when jobs close up. In a time, amen, when, glory to God, you about lost it all. In a time, amen, when everything is turning upside down, there's up economic up upheaval. And all of these things that's transpiring. David is telling this man, these 600 men, the leader, Itai, take your men and go to serve under Absalom. He is now the king. You go serve under him. I can't possibly ask you to come and serve with me because I really have no sure place as to where I'm going to be. How I'm going to handle this. Glory to God. Not even sure I'm going to be back to the throne. Glory to God. So he's telling Itai, why don't you go serve? Make it easy for yourself. Make it easy. That's one of the problems we have. Glory to God that we got people who are so ready to make it easy. Please listen to me. Sometimes we're so ready to make it easy. It's difficult sometimes. Hallelujah. It's a trial of your faith. It's a trial of your faith. It's a trial of your commitment. Hallelujah. It's a trial of your fidelity. It's a trial, glory to God. Hallelujah. That 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 of, of, of whether you are loyal mm. glory to God and so he said you got here yesterday should I this day make you go up and down with us and verse 21 said until I answered the king and said as the Lord liveth and as my soul liveth surely in what place my Lord the king shall be whether in death or in life oh somebody say hallelujah whether in death or in life, even there also will thy servant be. I did not just come here, glory to God, to serve under anybody. I came here to be with you. I came here to serve under you. I came here to be where you are come hell or high water. Whether in death or life. Whether it's prosperity or poverty. Somebody say hallelujah. In sickness or in health. I'm here, whether in life or death, no matter. Glory to God. I can't, I can't just leave you like that. I'm not going to just abandon you because there's a difficult time. Yes, glory to God. I understand the moment, but I'm here for you. I don't see the thing you got to know that it tell you I don't know Absalom, but he knows David. Somebody, you got to recognize who you got a relationship with. You got a relationship. You got a relationship. God has joined you and bonded you. Hallelujah to the leaders that you have. You got to learn how to appreciate that. Got to learn how to commit to it, even under these circumstances. Even under these circumstances. Glory to God. And David said to Itai, "Please go ahead on." After he said, "I'm I'm I'm, I'm committed to you. I'm committed." He said, "Go ahead and pass over." And Itai, the Gittite, passed over, and all his men, and all the little ones that were with him. See, he didn't just have himself and his men. He had their families, too. Glory to God. He was having a situation somewhat basically like David had when he was leading 600 men and their families. Hallelujah. So I need you to understand something. Now, what is happening here? Glory to God. At some point in time, you got to recognize
that you're going to need people you can rely on, you can depend on. Are y'all listening to me? Hallelujah. And that is proven in the fire. That's proven in difficult times. That's proven, amen, glory to God, when things are really, really bad. Under fire. Faith under fire. Glory to God. I got to kind of bring this in if I can. But I need you to understand. So what we're looking at here, we're looking at the fidelity. The fidelity of Itaya. Amen. He made a promise. He's, he's sticking by his promise. His, amen. He's loyal. Glory to God. Ah, thank you, Lord. What it means, and it, what it means, we need people who are loyal and faithful. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost has called you into the kingdom. God has called you into, into the kingdom for such a time as this. Loyalty is important. Loyalty is vital. Glory to God. It goes on to say, loyalty is the state or quality of being loyal. Feeling of faithfulness or allegiance. I'm aligned. I'm tied to you. I'm committed. Thank you, Lord. And so when we find that David, glory to God. Now listen, I want you to look at this. And when this took place, verse 23, and all the country wept with a loud voice. And all the people passed over. The king also himself passed over. The brook Kidron. And all the people passed over toward the way of the wilderness. Oh, glory to God. All of these. Now, there were some people who were loyal at one time that David lost during this time. There were some people who walked, went away and did not serve under David. They went and served under Absalom. Hello, somebody. Thank you, gracious Lord. Hallelujah. The king had gotten older. Ah, he, he was no longer young and virile. But he was still the king. He still had a warrior's heart. He still had the know-how. Somebody said hallelujah. And sometimes we, we leave in a time where God is proving and testing and trying our faith. Somebody said hallelujah. The devil means to me for you to run or means for me to run and lose heart and give up and turn coward and run. But you can't do that. Ultimately, glory to God. You that may not know the story ultimately there is a battle that would be fought there would be a time where david would have to stop running and have to fight his own son and his army hallelujah glory to god and in the process of david because david is not going to go out he he wants to but they won't let him go out david chooses three generals chapter 18 is where i want to go to now chapter 18 of second samuel david chooses three generals thank you lord 18 chapter verse began at verse one and david numbered the people that were come with him that were with him and set captains of thousands and captains of hundreds over them now now is the battle. Now David has to fight. He has to face, glory to God, his son, because his son is set on making this thing, glory to God, a war, and not only that, to annihilate David. But David has to fight, and he's not running this time. And David set forth, verse 2, a third part of the people of his army under Joab. He could always... Glory to God, depend on Joab. Joab had always proven that he was a warrior. May not been moral, godly, amen, not even holy, but he was a fighter. Glory to God. And so was his brother. Joab was David's nephew. And God and David put a third part of his army under the hand of under, under the hand of Joab. And a third part under the hand of Abishai, which was Joab's brother, which was also uh, David's nephew. The, the, these were David's uh, sister's sons. Hallelujah. And a third part. This is this what got me. And a third part under the hand of Itai, the Gittite. Somebody said, hallelujah. What am I trying to tell you? David, David.
David saw the commitment of Itaya. He saw the loyalty of Itaya. He saw that, 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 that Itaya was, was a constant friend, not a fair weather friend. He saw that Itaya, glory to God, would be with him in adversity. And David came to a place that where he recognized, I can trust this man. And he gave him a third part of his army. Itaya, somebody that used to be an adversary, has now become a friend and a loyal friend. Somebody say hallelujah. What am I trying to tell you? I'm trying to tell you that your faith is tested in adversity. This man proves his loyalty under adversity. Through the trials, through the glory to God difficult moments where there was no soft bed. Where was the, uh, there was no good, no, no nice food. Glory to God. No comfortable chair. It was there that Itai proved his loyalty to David. Glory to God. I want to say this to you. Hallelujah. This is not accidental or coincidental. God may not have ordained it, but he allowed this to be. There's something he's proving and testing in you and myself. Glory to God. You are being, your faith is on trial. I want you to stand firm in your faith. Stay faithful in your, the trial of your faith being much more precious than that of gold. I want to encourage you. Fight the good fight of faith. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Continue to read the word. Continue to pray. Continue, glory to God, to assemble yourself. Hallelujah. Continue to fight the good fight of faith. God bless you. I love you in Jesus' name. Well, blessed be. Blessed be the name of the Lord God. God is good all the time. And all of the time, God is good. I want to encourage you to stay committed. Continue to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Remember, your faith is tested in adversities. And it is so true. I'm telling you, anybody can say they love God, but it is tested in the midst of trial. Fear not, little sheep, God said, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. You are more than a conqueror through Christ that loves you so. The Bible declares that you can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. You can make it. And we give God praise and glory for what he's done. I um, want to encourage you to keep fighting the good fight of faith. Now this is Thursday. Yes, I'm, I still believe that we're going to assemble once, one more time on tomorrow night. If you can come and uh, share with us. We certainly would appreciate it. Tomorrow night at 7. It'll be at 7, okay? Tomorrow night at 7. Thanks for coming. May the grace of God be with you. Remember, this is the Holy Spirit week is what we call this. This is the week where we are learning. We really want to learn more about following the leading of the Lord and fighting through adversities and standing and withstanding. Once we've done all that we can to stand, to stand therefore. It is critical. Now, I speak to you, those of you that are in the audience, those that I say the audience, those of you that are in the parking lot, and those of you that are watching uh, by digital media, be encouraged. I know we are in a great fight of affliction. This virus is real, very real. It's not a figment of somebody's imagination. You heard what the pastor just said. He himself contracted it, but God brought him through. So, and I believe that God is faithful. Please, don't do anything foolish. Wear your mask. I'm standing here, but I have my mask in my pocket. When I stop talking, I'm going to put my mask on. Wear your mask. Wash your hands. Set, use hand sanitizer. Practice social distancing. That is so critical, okay? It is critical that you do that. Be careful. Don't let your guard down. Don't let it down, please. Thank you for coming tonight. May the grace of God be with you and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit. God bless. You're dismissed. May have a smile upon you.